Okay. Let's t talk about missing data. Um, I think the biggest mistake that people make with missing data is that they don't anticipate that they'll be missing data. And especially in, re in research, that's a, that's a big problem. Um, investigators and research assistants and so forth sometimes think that they, that every question, they'll be able to answer every question on every form, but that's not the case. I mean, we really need to prepare and plan for missing data. There will be missing data. Um, regardless of all of our efforts to avoid it. Um, so before data collection begins, you want to determine how data, missing data will be rep recorded, how it will be entered, how it will be represented in the, in the data management system. Some of the possibilities for coding missing data are to have um, special missing data values. So, for example, you could have um, not applicable. You could actually have that on the form as a response. So, like, if you're asking about pregnancy, you could have yes, no, not applicable, and you would expect all the uh, male patients to have NA um, ticked. Um, another example is when we're talking about adherence to medications. I mean, if a patient is not taking any medications, then that question is really not applicable. So you could have a response category not applicable. Uh, another category would be not available. Um, if a variable is added to a questionnaire after the first revision, um, then you might, you might want to code those records that were collected, those data that were collected prior to when that variable was added as not available. Instead of just leaving it as missing, you may want to say it, it's missing because it was not on the form at the time. Another example is even um, sometimes machinery breaks and things. So if, if the scale is not working for, if a clinic is without a, a scale for a week, you may want to have a special category for saying that the data were not available as opposed to just leaving a blank for the weight. Um, unknown is kind of an interesting, it's not really missing data. I mean, it's, it's really, it's known to be unknown. So like if you ha ask somebody about the HIV status of their partner, they may not be able to tell you whether they're positive negative, or negative. So unknown is, is a valid response. I mean, it's actually the response that you get from, from, the, uh, from the patient. So it's a good idea to think about um, whether or not you need an unknown when you're designing data collection forms. And it's also, you may also want to have unknown and not available. I mean, you could have multiple uh, um, reasons for missing data, and you could have multiple reasons for one uh, concept. Uh, refusal to answers. Um, sometimes patients are um, hesitant to answer questions about stigma or about family matters. <clears throat> so you may want to put on the form that the, that the uh, a, a checkbox to indicate that the patient refused to answer. Because that's important information as opposed to just leaving that, that item totally blank. It might, it might be important to know that the patient refused as opposed to uh, the data was not gathered. And then the, the, the true missing is, is the, the question was actually skipped, that the, that the item was never asked and so a response was never given. So trying to decide, I mean, you're going to choose different ways of coding for different types of variables. And I think this is where you really need to work with the research investigator or the clinician, whoever is interested in the, in, and the statistician as well, is ever interested in working with the data that they get from these data collection forms to, to figure out how much effort should be put into coding 
the reason why data are missing, okay? And you're going to make different choices for different variables. Does that make sense? Okay. So you want to be, you, you need, when you're planning for missing data, you want to be able to understand how missing data will be managed in the analysis um, to help determine how much information should be gathered about the missing data. So in addition to, you know, getting input from the, from the clinicians and the researcher themselves, the analyst should be involved <clears throat> so you know how it's going to be dealt with. There are different types of missing data. Um, and I hope I can explain this. So missing completely at random means that the probability of missing data on variable y is unrelated to the true value of y or any other variables in the data set. So here we're talking about at the point that the statistician gets the data and there's no there, there are missing data and it's not been coded as unknown, it's not been coded as patient refused, they have no idea, it's just missing. Null values, missing data, okay? So missing completely and random is, is data that where the probability of the missing data is not related to that particular variable or any other variable in the system. So for example, if, if you have a flood in the building and it, it wipes out all the the forms for a specific day in clinic. That is not related to the patients that came to clinic that day. It's not related to the clinicians that were collecting data. It's not related to the patient's uh, severity of, of a disease. It's not related to anything, right? It's a natural disaster. <laughs> so that is missing completely at random. Okay, is that clear? Okay. So then we have missing at random. And this is where the probability of a missing data on variable y is unrelated to y only after you adjust for some other variable. So another way to look at this is to say that, it, that the, missing, the missingness on variable y is related to other variables. Okay, so for example, sometimes if a patient is really sick, a clinician may not draw blood for, routine, uh, for routine labs or for, for study specific labs because the patient is just too sick to give blood that day. Okay, so the lab results that you would have gotten from that patient that day are dependent on the fact that the patient was so sick that the clinician couldn't draw the blood. Okay, so that's a situation where the clinician or the, the research assistants are making decisions based on the patient's status that may affect the actual um, data that's in the system, the, the reason why they didn't draw it. So why could be white blood cell count? Well, you're going to have a really high white blood cell count if you're sick, right, I think? I got any clinicians in here? No. So, so this is going to be a problem, right? I mean, because if, if the clinicians fail to draw blood on all those patients who, have, who are sick, then you may not see any high uh, white blood cell counts in the database. All those data will be missing. So this is, that's a situation where the missing is, is at random some clinicians may decide, some clinicians may not decide to draw the blood on, on sick patients. So this one becomes a little more tricky to work with when you're doing the analysis. But the most tricky one is the not missing at random. The, so this means that the, pro the probability of missing data on Y is dependent on the value of Y. So if you're asking a group of patients what their income is, and you, you know that those who make a higher income may be less inclined to divulge their income, then you're going to have missing data in places where uh, 
uh, in, that, in that higher income bracket more than anywhere else. Okay? So how do we, how do we document missing, missingness, missing data? What, what are the different ways? I mean, um, one way is to embed the missing codes and or the missing variables in the data set or in the data collection forms. And I talked about this a little bit. If you actually put on the form a checkbox for not applicable, um, patient refused, then those, then that information about why that item is missing would be in the database embedded with the record for that specific patient on that specific visit. And the, and there are, there are pros and cons to this. The pros would be that the, that, that information is permanently associated with that variable and it's immediately available for analysis. It reduces the need to go back and relook at the data. If you, if you go to do a study and you have a lot of missing data, you know, sometimes they'll ask you to go back to the charts and try and identify the reason for missing. Whereas if you already had the reasons listed on the form, then you might not need, then there would be less, there would be more information in the system already and you would know why those data are missing and would not need to go back to the charts. The, the cons are that it takes up a lot of digital physical space and it increases the time needed to complete the forms. So there are choices to be made about what, you know, selecting the best way to, to, to collect missing data or to collect information about missing data. The second method is, is providing um, an explanation in a separate um, metadata document. So, for example, if, if a variable was added to a questionnaire after one year into a study, then of course all the data for that variable would be missing prior to that date. And you wouldn't necessarily have to go into the system and, and insert a, co a specific code, or you could insert a specific code for all those, but you could also have another file that, said, that contains meta information and say that contains the information about those about the fact that that variable is not available prior to a certain date. So the pros are that it, that it provides a global explanation of the missing data. It requires minimal digital and physical space. Um, but the cons are that it eliminates the ability to code subject level data. Um, it tends to get lost um, and separated from the file. I mean, it requires extra effort in, in maintaining the the link with, with the actual data file. So the benefits of, of documenting missingness is that it, it informs the quality control reporting. You're not going to, you're not going to send an error report or a quality, you're not going to generate a cleanup query on a variable that was, was added to a system, you know, for, at a certain date for all the patients that were enrolled prior to that date before that variable was available. <coughs> So you really need to know um, uh, about the missingness. So that so it's a good idea to document what what's going on with the missingness there. It allows for full disclosure and publications and presentations of data. Um, one of the biggest hurdles in in getting data published is um, missing data. Actually, you know you 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 work out an analysis, you work out a project, a concept proposal, and then you get to, down to it and you, you keep having to eliminate patients or visits because there's too much missing data. So if you have information about the missingness of those data, you get, have a better chance of getting things published because you can explain um, why, why the data are missing and that's usually more acceptable. Um, some statistical analysis methods depend on the different types of missing. So they can, they, they use one method if it's missing completely, if the data are missing completely at random versus missing at random. So um, it's good to know, it's good to be able to identify what, what cases you have. And it's um, useful for meta methodological research on uh, related to missing data. 
so the statisticians, uh, missing data is a huge problem. And so if the statisticians get any information they can on missing data, they can, they can adjust their methods and develop new methods for handling uh, um, situations in similar cases. So some procedures for minimizing missing data. In the clinic or in your setting where you're actually completing the data collection forms, if somebody can review those forms while the study subject or while the patient is still in the clinic, you can actually you know, identify some of those missing values and um, fill them in before the patient walks out the door. And, and we like to make this a part of the clinical staff and training and, and oversight. So at the point of data entry, you can, you can prevent entry of forms that have missing key variables. As we, I mentioned earlier, you don't, want, you don't want a record going into the database without a proper patient ID or visit date. Um, and you can also, for other non-key fields, you can alert the data entry clerk about missing variables. So what we do sometimes is set up a system that, you know, the data entry clerk enters the data and then a screen pops up and says, you didn't, you didn't answer, you didn't enter anything for question number five. And the data entry clerk can, can, can double check and the form and compare and make sure that there is no response for five or they can go back and, and, and